Hello and welcome to Infinity. We're going to now do a edit of this picture and it's going to be nice and slow and we'll start off because it's a raw image from the camera and so we're starting off in the develop persona here. So first of all, yes, I know it's tilted and we're going to correct that, but we're going to do that later on in the photo persona. First of all, the key problem here is a lot of kind of dark. You've got dark and light. This was taken probably in the middle of the day or something like that. And you've got this band of light down here we're going to have a look at. So first of all, going down to shadows and highlights here, and this is just going to make a tweak here to get this as light into this shadow. So I'm going to pull the highlights up here. Well, down down here so we're darkening the highlights then we're going to pull the whole thing up again which will bring up the shadows and we can do that by pulling the exposure here up just watching the histogram as we go we don't overdo it we've got all these set on here so it'll show us if we're going too far so if you go too far you see it starts to come in there but even that's rather far so i'm going to go up to roundabout two here looks a bit bright here but don't worry we're going to correct that we're going to pull it back down again with the black point and we take this down very carefully and that's going to go down to let's have a look at this now we can make it darker don't we go the other way that looks better so yeah i'm round up to about 10 percent that looks more like it there now we've turned the saturation looks a little bit on the high side so we'll pull that down a bit down to round about minus 20 here that sort of thing so now we got a bit better here the, the light in the shadow here we haven't actually obliterated it but we've got something that looks a little bit more more natural in the way because the, the way the eye works the eye will compensate for shadows we won't notice them as much as a camera will see them so we pull that in there so now then we're going to develop this and we'll try something here we'll go to the tone mapping persona and this lets you do some fairly extreme things and this is typically used for hdr photographs they were very fashionable at one time to have them quite extreme but then it's gone back the other way so what you get here tone compression starts right up so we say normally it's like this and brings this up and actually this is quite nice it's often nice to pull that up local contrast is the one you need to be careful with because if we pull this one up here see everything starts to get rather gritty so uh, this let's have a look say around about 30 percent there's a bit more detail, a bit more definition in here without it getting gritty. The rest of the things within here are just the same as you get in the develop persona. So that's the only thing really we want to do here. So now then we'll apply that. And now we're going to go to the photo persona. And yes, we're going to straighten this up here. In fact, you've got to tilt this way and to tilt this way. So you could rotate it, but also you might want to kind of just do an individual skew. So if you go down here, right click to really get the perspective tool. And now I can just pull out any corner here and really change it. So I'm just going to pull this out to the left here. And I'm keeping an eye on this drain pipe here to get it parallel to the edge there. So that looks about right there. Now this one here, I want that to be parallel as well. So I could pull this one in or I can just pull the one from the bottom out. So I'll do that so I'm not, don't have to try and fill things in a bit there. So that'll, that's about okay there. Now then is this perfectly straight here? Um, I'm not sure. So I'm just going to apply that there and go to the mesh warp. And now I can just click on one point here, drag this up and down a little bit to get to, just to hope I think, just visually straighten up that just tiny tweak. 
Okay, that will do there, so I apply that. Right, now what are we going to do? Um, let's get a, have a go at this bottom area here. So I'll control roll the mouse wheel to zoom in. And then with that, we'll select this area here. So I'm going to go to the selection brush, make sure that snap to edge is on. And the brush is a bit small there. Let's make that a bit bigger with the right square bracket. And let's just paint over here. We want to get up to the edge of this. So don't worry too much about things like this. So Alt click to get it back down there again. And make the brush a bit smaller here. So Alt click to remove, you know, which is the same as clicking on subtract up there, but it just is a quicker way of doing it. We're going to take this shadow out as well here because we're going to darken this down and we just want to leave that a bit as it is. So I'm just going to click in here, Alt click here. There we go. It's sometimes the process is a bit slow, just catching up. Sometimes again, just dabbing here. Make sure the brush is inside the bit you want to do. Yeah, so we're going to make this a bit smaller again. We'll finish this off with the refine. So we're just going to get a little bit at the edge here, which helps to give it a clue. Don't want to get that in there. OK, let's. Leave that there and we'll go to the refine. Now we need to cover these areas here, so I'm going to paint over this. See if it can figure out. Yeah, there you go. See, it's got that right there. So I'm going to paint over this here, go back along this side, and maybe a bit in here. There you go. That's good. Now then, the output. I'm going to output, rather than just output as a selection, I output to a new layer with a mask, which means I can then retweak it if I need to and apply that. There we go, control zero to go back out again. And what we're going to do is we're going to put some curves in there. So we've got a mask on this, so we can always go to the mask and adjust all that selection. So I'm going to go to adjustments and curves. It's dropped it above here because these days I'm if I go up here to the assistant manager I tend to add adjustments as new layers so they appear above. If you wanted to appear inside here then you change that there too as a child layer to the that one. So filters and adjustments I leave as new layers and masks I have as a child layer. So I'm going to drag this down so I get a little vertical blue bar there and drop that in. Now I want to try and make this darker. So if I pull this down here, this is getting darker there, but it's still not right there. So what I'm going to do is get pick down here and pull this up. In fact, let's just go in a bit closer again to this so we can see where it is. And bring the curves over a bit so we can see that a bit better. So you want to match up this here. So let's bring this one up here a bit. There we go. See, that's getting closer to the original up there. There we go. Just bring this up and down a bit until we pretty closely matched this. So bring that down. So it's just a matter of fitting with this couple of points. It gives you an awful lot of control here. And looking towards the, the whole thing you can you can sort of play with this until you get it about right then I can use the go to the mask and paint on the mask again here but I'll click the mask you can see where it is so I'm going to make this edge here a little bit less distinct by painting on here with a soft white brush so I go back up to here so I can see it click on the mask go to a paintbrush you can make sure it's white and opacity, yeah, down around about a third at that hardness, just very soft. And make this up here. So I'm going to paint just along here a bit. You can see you're getting rid of that line there because you're blurring that edge. So 
And again, I'm going to blur this edge here. So just making it gap there is not as, as noticeable. There we go. And I can always go back and play with the curves a little bit more if I want to get a, so I can get it a little bit better. Okay, let's leave it there. So now we can start some other sort of minor tweaking. And I've just looked for little things which just catch your eye and maybe be a little bit too much. It's a little bit up here and a little bit down here, so let's sort of zoom into it. That sign there is blue. Maybe I can just reduce the saturation on that. So I'm going to go to a HSL. That just puts up the top here. And turn turn the saturation. So this goes a bit grey. There, I'm going to leave a little bit of colour in it. And but then I want to invert the mask, so Control I, the built in mask to that, brings it all back. Now I can paint in white on that. So I go to the paintbrush here, painting in white, and paint this here. You bring the opacity up a bit. There we go. Just to take this colour down a bit to make it a bit greyer so it doesn't doesn't just grab the eye unnecessarily, but it doesn't look unnatural as well. So there you go, that's dropped back a bit. This little thing up here, what's that? Oh, it's a plant pot. So it's kind of natural, but I'm going to paint over that as well, just to take that back. And this thing up here, just paint over that. Click here, then shift click to draw a line and you can get over that. So it's just taking things back a bit, which are going to grab the eye when you're doing it. I could do the same to those flags there, but I'll leave those because this is a, that's a Spanish flag and this is in Spain, so I'm going to leave that there. Now all you've got left now is to, is to start playing with things. So if you, do I like this colour scheme? I quite like it, but some might find it a bit bright. So I'm going to go down to here, go to HSL. So this is another HSL layer here, but this is overall for this. And let's start off with playing with the saturation. So I'll take this down, down here. I'll go down to around about minus 30 here. And what I got is a far more muted effect, seeing so, you know, before and after there. So it might like this. Then could even make this a bit darker, so bring down the luminosity to something similar. So now I got more of a perhaps evening scene with a little bit of light in here. I can also go the other way. I can push it up. So I put this up here to this is around about plus thirty here. Now we've got a, a more of an evening scene, and a bit on the yellow side, but uh, maybe you can pull it down a bit, whatever you like. You can also go the other way here and pull the luminosity up. So now you've got another colouring scheme here with the way it's almost getting here to a, a high key type picture. So there you go. And those are all the various things that you can do just to play around and see what you like. Because that's in the end, the best judgment is how you feel about the picture. Anyway, that's it. And thank you very much for watching.